I think gynecological issues have been something that have been paramount in my life from quite a young age. Um, having lost my mum to ovarian cancer when I was 26 and she was just 54, it kind of brought gynecological health and well-being like right up close and personal to me in um, quite a harsh and dramatic way um, and uh, left me potentially overly cautious and overly focused on that area of my body and I have had uh, you know a, a backpack worth of issues over the years but the one that I feel has had the biggest impact on me in my 40s is being diagnosed with interstitial cystitis which is a specific sort of cystitis it's not the bacterial kind that you go to the doctors and have antibiotics for it is the kind of cystitis where the interstitial layer of your bladder so the protective layer of skin around your bladder that should stop toxins from coming in is not working properly so essentially my bladder lets toxins in and what happens when i have a an episode of it is that um, my, my bladder becomes inflamed and then obviously I get pain in the urethra and it can have a really serious impact on my uh, sensation in terms of my clitoris and clitoral orgasms and this has been going on for five years. Uh, my mother didn't raise me to be focused on, on, on having children. It wasn't part of her message to me as, as, as her daughter. Her message to me was to be the greatest woman that I could be and to follow my heart, and follow my dreams, which I'd done. And then I got to 40 and it's kind of like, okay, if you want to have children, then you need to get on with it now. And I, and I did want to have children, but I wanted to have them with someone that I loved. I wasn't the type of human who wanted to have a child so much that I was going to go and do it on my own. And just when I should have been thinking about it, I was diagnosed with institutional cystitis. So I did go and investigate doing some egg freezing. And the feedback that I got from doctors at that time was that if I wanted to think about egg freezing, the rounds that, well, I, I was told that I had a, um, a low follicle count, which meant that I'd probably need more rounds of IVF to get enough eggs to make it really worth my, my while. And they looked at what was going on for me in that area of my body and they were strongly advising me against putting medications in my, my body. So I, I, I sobbed a bit and chose not to do that and stayed hopeful that I would meet someone on my journey and that we would get pregnant naturally, which now I've accepted is not gonna happen. Um, and it's painful, but it's not painful every day. And one of the things that I find most difficult about the conversation for women around children is the assumption that you should feel the same about it all of the time. So on some days, I can feel the whole gauntlet of emotions from thank God I don't have children to being sometimes on the floor, distraught that I haven't managed to. And most of the time I sit somewhere in the middle, which is that it didn't happen and I'm letting it go. In terms of looking after my gynae health today, one of the things that I find the most powerful is to, and I forget this all of the time, is to remember about the mind-body connect. And one of the most important things is to remember that pain, pain is the biggest gift that we've ever been given as human beings. It is there to tell us that there is something wrong. And it also checks us out of our bodies a bit. So during these two episodes that I had just recently, I was lying in bed and I was like, this is horrendous. Have I got cancer? What's going on? Am I going to get told I've got clitoral cancer? And then I was like, why don't you just drop into it? And I let all of my thoughts and all of my being drop down into that area of my body. And I breathed into it and I listened to it and I heard it and I soothed it with myself. I soothed myself and it went. And it hasn't come back since. But that was just a week ago. <laughs> the journey continues.